It's gonna be a slow road, you'll get there, but it's gonna be a slow road. You have to listen to what their pain points are. Anybody else have any pain points in this room? Is everybody in this room prepared for retirement right now? <clears throat> that's a pain point. If you bury your head in the sand and you don't think about that, that's not gonna be good when you're 65. Right, you're gonna be the first person at four o'clock at the restaurant knocking to see if they'll let you in five minutes early because it's 20% off on your dinner tonight. <laughs> and then you'll go home and watch Jeffrey because Alex Trebek will still be the host. And then you'll go play shuffleboard and then you'll sit on your recliner and you're gonna to wanna to kill yourself. <laughs> I don't want that retirement. I wanna be in Spain with my wife in a bikini and I want my son's blonde hair to be blown in the wind. And I want to tell my parents your flight's out here in four days because I need four days without you, but you're still coming. Right? That's what I want. Okay? Cross sales. That's who we're talking to. We're going to talk to a bunch of agents who don't do real estate business. I'm going to talk to agents that do do real estate business. How many people have had a cross sale with me in this room? Okay, I also sell real estate, by the way. <laughs> some, of, some of you guys have come over underneath me. Others of you have come over before or after me, but we're all in the same cruise ship. It's awesome. I love working with you guys. Invite agents to, uh, agents to events. Okay, so what's the worst thing about EXP? When you're brand new, you got your sword, you got your shield, you're battle fatigue, you're excited, it's January, whatever it is, right? And you're like, I'm gonna go out there and conquer the world in 2019. I'm gonna drive up to the Peninsula Club and, and take in all of this energy. And I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna hammer it out. What's the first thing you gotta do? You're gonna sit there and look at your blank cell phone at 9 a.m. and think, oh no, I've gotta call and have conversation with people who don't wanna talk to me. So I say don't do that. We have Zoom calls every single day of the week. We have live events all the time. We have in-person training monthly. If you talk to an agent on Tuesday, you can have them a Zoom call that same afternoon. We have big events all the time. Invite them. It's so much easier to invite people. I'm gonna pull out Amy. Where's Amy Jones? Amy, Amy could use a victory here. Amy wanted to have a lunch alone in Wilmington. I drove out there to go talk to all the people, and I had a brain fart on stage that I couldn't recover for. It was like a minute of silence. You should have seen it. <laughs> awesome. It never happened to me, but I was like, okay, I, I really need to focus here. So anyway, she invited, and she had 31 people in the room. You know why she was able to do that? Two things. She wasn't afraid of making phone calls because she made it in my conference room at our office. And two, she invited people to an event much easier. What are realtors like? Food? Who's uh, not eating sugar right now? <laughs> Don't worry, another week of eating sugar. Right? So, all right. So, food and education. Invite them to an event. We have lunch and learns. They're on the sites that you've been given to plug in. Have them come to a lunch and learn. We filled these rooms here in, the, in Cornelius the first two months we were up and running. Very easy. How do you invite them to an event? Hey, listen, there's an explosive new model that's out there. It's called the EXP Realty. Instead of being great prisoners, and we love our warden, I love my warden, right? That's what everyone says. Keller Williams, Remax, Cola. I love my broker charge. Well, more than you love your retirement, more than you love your family, more than you love having a, a, an anxiety-free time off vacation. How, how's your vacations, guys? The day before that you go, your phone blows up, you're stressed out, and then now you're in another geography pretending that you're on vacation doing business? Not me. I shut off, right? Because of EXP. That's why. Because I have residual income. And I do it by inviting agents. Invite agents to Zoom calls. Pretty easy. Hey guys, I know we're busy and you don't want to have to show up to a lunch and learn with a bag on your head and a breathing hole just so no one sees and rats you out. Come check out our Zoom call, right? I sound like Sylvester Stallone when I'm talking on the Zoom call. And then Barry comes in and he's like the most polished individual ever. I was like, oh my God, who was the guy that just had the stroke before Barry got on there? Right? That's me. I'm explaining the whole model the best that I can, right? So come over here and do a Zoom call and invite them to a Zoom call. It's the same link two days a week, and the rest of the links are all right on there. This is what you don't do. Don't use KB Core for recruiting. That's going to be a company no-no, and you're going to get caught. Don't do that. Just use that for business. That's what we do. We sell real estate, right? Now we can sell a lot more of it. Mass emailing. Don't do that. It's against the pledge. You don't want to do it. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. All right? It's going to, it's going to give you a, a false sense of 
of integrity in the sense that you work and you try to grow your team, but it's a false sense, it's not real. The percentage is so bad, and it's such little work, and it's so unauthentic. Have any of you guys ever been sold over the phone on anything? Don't sell over the phone. Nobody wants that. Invite them to something that they can't unsee. Robocalls. I don't know what this means, but somebody created this idea where you can call everybody at once. It's crazy. It's totally crazy. Don't do robocalls. Mass text and messages. Social media, mass text. No one's going to want to be friends with an EXP agent if 7,000 other EXP agents talked about EXP the second that they connected. All right? This is like trying to get the you know, home plate on your first date. Don't do that. Let's get the first base. Dust off. Look around. Fake like you're going to steal second. Look at your home. Guys in the dugouts. Hey, guys, I got the first place. Now what do I do to get the second? We're here to help you. Okay? We're not your boss. I'm not anyone's boss here. If you guys want a boss, you need a W-2. We, we figured this out with nothing. Right? We're just trying to avoid 10,000 mistakes for you because it's been a trying time. Bill and I both look older. At least Bill does. Where is he? <laughs> He's not here? He's up there. Yeah. Bill looks way older. Right? <laughs> so, anyway. My hair looks great. I get it. But, yeah. No, so I look so much older. After doing this, it's been so exhausting on it. Bill's been able to keep himself up. But it's been <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're, gonna, we're not going to do those things on the right hand side because they're cheap and they're easy and you're better than that, okay? So we're not going to do that. So what we are going to do is some of this. We're going to talk. We're going to ask smart questions. Who here likes mashed potatoes? End the conversation. What kind of mashed potatoes do you like? Do you like bacon in there? How do you feel about when some of the skin's in there? <laughs> Let's have conversations that lead somewhere, that go somewhere. We don't want to do this the wrong way. Or somebody that's involved in this thing, I'm going to hand this off. All right, this is right here. All right, people in the back can't hear anything. Let's go talk to you guys. I'm happy where I'm at. Has anyone heard that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, good. How do you guys feel about that statement? I'm happy where I'm at. That's great. I love when you're happy. I'm happy where I'm at too. We're all satisfied until something better comes our way. Right? I like my first girlfriend, not more than I like my wife. Right? If I would have met my wife while I had my first girlfriend, it would have been another mark on my life. <laughs> right? I want to evolve to have the best life that I can around the best people, the best lifestyle, the best energy, the most charitable people. And when something new is exposed to me that helps enlighten me and makes me think that my life is going to be more cathartic more fulfilling, then that's something that resonates with me and I maybe want to look at that. That's how this has to be presented. This is an, an intermediate solution to your financial goals and this is a long-term solution to your financial problems. Don't forget, we're, we're immediate. We can still sell real estate, right? That's what we're doing. We sold a ton of it. Our agent sells more than almost any other company here in the Charlotte market. That's the only thing I can speak to. Okay? So that's great. I'm glad that you love where you're at. I loved where I was at in every facet of my life until something better came along and made me rethink things. Right? What have they provided with you, uh, for you for your retirement? That's a good question because if you guys want a five second chance to breathe, total silence. Right? When, when you guys were at your last firm, what did they provide for you for your retirement? How many times did the broker in charge or owner of the company, who maybe didn't even know your, your first name, come up to you and say, Hey, Rich, thanks for selling all this real estate and being the top team of my seventh branch location. I'm really worried about what's going to happen to you at 62 and a half. Have you guys had a lot of those conversations? All right, good. What percentage of your business was given to you, and what percentage did you go out there and earn and bring back to the mothership? Now we're having dialogue, right? These are things that they are afraid to ask themselves. They haven't asked themselves this stuff. Two, I love my broker, my favorite. We'll get to one that I have to hold back my inner a-hole. <laughs> and then think that 
I have a son, and I have to behave in a way that I want him to behave. So, Rich, don't say that. That's great. You'll be together forever. You love your broker, you're going to have a beautiful 30 years working side by side with your broker because they have no retirement plan, no end game, no nothing. You're with your broker forever. So the love affair is going to last forever. It's awesome. I struggled with the same thing and the same conflict. I used to have martinis with my old owner every Tuesday, and I don't like martinis. Right? Every Tuesday we had martinis all the time. Right, Jimmy? All the time. And after six years, I sat down and I was like, listen, it's, it's my sanity, my health, my family, the little bit of love for myself that I don't always forget. Or it's you. So it's you. Right? If you love your broker, that's great. What about your retirement plan? What about your family? What about your parents? Do you think that you're going to have to help them as they get older? Most of them got slaughtered in the downturn. Right? I retired my mom in March of this year on revenue share. In March of this year, my revenue share was at an amount where I could give my mom one third of it, where it still hurt me to give it, and retire my mom. And now it's just a tiny portion. It's not even 5% of what my revenue share is. Right? What about your parents? What about your kids? 54% of them are going to get divorced. Right? They're going to go to college. I went to college until I found out that you have to maintain a certain grade point average. <laughs> I was like, what happened to the mandatory attendance of high school? <laughs> Apparently, if you don't show up, you don't learn. It's tough. <laughs> so you've got to look at this conflict, and you've got to choose you. You've got to choose you. Three, no office space. Eh, not necessarily true. <coughs> my office is in my phone. It's everywhere, all the time. I need to send a digital signature to an agent that lost it three times. I can sit at the beach and send it in a second. I need a question from the tech department. No problem. Fix it. I need to learn something in the auditorium. Yeah, no problem. I'll do it on my Bluetooth while I'm driving to an appointment. If you need a place to meet, create your own office. We have rules that you can abide by that are very simple. Create your own space. Tom Hocker, Eric McCauley, Marcus Benjamin, and myself. We pay $220 a month. And we have a, a, an office, a conference center, a TV, uh, a printer scanner. Easy. No problem. We have 3,000 Regis executive spaces. 3,000 across the country. We have three within 20 miles of this location right now. It's free for you to use. Go use the executive lounge. If you need to rent the conference room, rent it. It's at a discount. If you need permanent office space, I suggest you don't use it. It's more expensive than what you can get on the outside. <coughs> Four, I'm at 100%. This is great. You have solved all of your short-term problems. I'm very, very proud of you. A lot of people can't do that. That's great. <laughs> all of your short-term problems are solved because you get 100% of what's here right now. What about later? What's your retirement look? Are you taking that extra 20 or 30% that you're saving and are you locking it up in a retirement plan that's compounding and growing and that's going to create res residual income for you for the rest of your life? Maybe not. Most, most agents are struggling to pay their taxes from January to April of the last year. So I seriously doubt that this kind of discipline is alive and well within the, the business. Okay? So here, what I say to those people is great. You could be at 100% at EXP as soon as you ICOM. You'll get $12,000 uh, uh, of your stock back, and that will be three-year investing period. And then if you attend the shareholders meeting and the convention, you'll get $2,000 apiece, and that'll be immediate. New rule. That's how it goes. So, Bill, you've been at 100% every time you sold real estate here. He's, he's one of the few icon agents that we have, and we have a few in this room. Right? So, Southern Homes, EXP, what's the main big difference? Nothing against Southern Homes. Great company. Right? Is that he gets stock, he gets KV core leads, he gets five different departments to help support him in the campus, he gets workplace by Facebook to receive referrals and put them out there to our, to our partners. He gets it all. Right? He gets revenue share. Bill, how many people have you? He's a man of one. How many people are in your entire organization? Uh, 607. This is a. <laughs> By the way, the only other person in the room with more than 40 level ones, and Keely's right on our heels. This is going to change. The next meeting, she's going to have to talk up here. Sorry. Mm. Right? So, this is, this is what happens. If, if, if somebody came in this office, 
and say, oh, I have my own brokerage. You pass by it all the time. I have 100 agents and I have a $15,000 lease and I have uh, $280,000 of salaries and I have a four-hour power bill and all my agents steal paper after six o'clock, <laughs> right? You'd say, oh my God, you're a success. Bill's got 600 plus agents. He doesn't own a paper clip. <laughs> Except Nick. Where's Nick? Yeah. <laughs> well spent. I've been in my firm for years. That's the whole agenda. They want you there forever. You're going to be there forever. If you love your broker, it's probably because you spent many, many years with your broker. I'm going to fall down right here. <laughs> Twice it's happened right there. So anyway, if you've been there for years, that's great. What have you recovered? What have you recovered? So I was on an 85-15 commission split and no cap. And it cost my team $100,000 a year versus just coming over to EXP. I've been in the business in North Carolina for 12 and a half years selling real estate. That's $1.2 million that could be in our account. I've earned over 6,000 shares of stock in the last 15 months, times that by 12. It's expensive. You've been where you're at for years. That's like someone absolutely telling me, I've rented my house for years. I'm so excited. I love paying the landlord and not having equity in my home. You guys are hearing that and you're not laughing. You have to laugh. That's absurd. You need to have equity in your career, like you need to have equity in your home, like you need to have equity in your decisions, like you need to have equity in your willpower. You need to work, push hard, we're here for you. Every single person you can't close, you can dial me up and I'll help you close them. And if I can't close them, we'll get somebody better. Simple, okay? And I don't wanna be on an island. Well, listen. I watched that dreadful movie where Tom Hanks was talking to a volleyball on the island. <laughs> right? And I was like, oh my god, this is endless. This is Tom Hanks trying to get an Oscar. Right? And if you're on an island, all I can say is that you guys are listening to the spin zone, guys. This is the spin zone. Every company is hemorrhaging agents in a way that is uncomfortable for whoever it filters in. You guys like pyramid schemes? Well, what about the scheme where the whole pyramid goes into one person's pocket versus it goes into all of our pockets? Right? That's a scam, right? So that person's upset, and they, work, they have different flags, and they say, oh, EXP is not sustainable. Yeah, really? We don't have a lot of debt. We have $22 million in the bank. We're growing at 232%. I don't know, feels sustainable to me. When the next downturn comes, what happens, guys? Well, I'd like to not have all these robust expenses that are now obsolete. So I feel like it's sustainable. Oh, EXP is a virtual company. There's no support. Really? 35 hours of live training taught by icon agents. Bill can teach a class I can't. Right? Because he sold 22 million this year. Right? So that's who's it. Heather can teach a class. So we are at a situation. Rob Milbro, I don't know if he's in the room. Icon agent. He can teach a class. So we have support. We're here in person. You know how hard it is to get a bunch of realtors to go on I-77 and meet on a Saturday morning? Yeah. Well, apparently not that hard. We only had 120 chairs. So we're in a kind of a predicament. So you're not on an island. We have in-person training every month. We have Zoom calls every day. We have face-to-face -face all the time. We have big events. We bring in big people to have events. You know who's spoken in Charlotte the last year? Jason Guestin, the CEO of this company for nine years. Brent Gove the biggest, most explosive revenue shareholder in EXP in the time that he's joined. Gene Frederick, on the board of directors, sold six Keller Williams offices because he went home and told his wife, hey, what do you think of Netflix? And she goes, I love Netflix. And he goes, well, we got six blockbusters. <laughs> <laughs> we have a problem. Right? So what happens, what happens now? That's the question. What happens now? Are you guys going to go home and are you going to sell yourself short by saying I'm too afraid to be embarrassed? Because I'm not too afraid. I will be embarrassed. That's how I'll get better. When I was a white belt in karate, I got hit all the time. And when I was a black belt in karate, I made sure every black belt that was a not a real black belt looked like a white belt when we were sparring. The only way that you grow is to put yourself through pain. And, it, and you have a year to do this. 2019 is your year. 
You got 365 pages. It's a, play, it's a blank book. You're four pages in, five pages in. What are you gonna write? What's your story gonna be? Are you gonna be exactly where you were in 2018? Or are you gonna dig deeper, try harder, plug in better, create a revenue share for your family? All right, I'm all done. Thank you. <laughs> Could use some time. Hopefully, you got some insight, something that you can, we can take away. Uh, I just got some ideas, some things that people have shared with me over the years uh, in my soccer career as a, as a player, I've been as a coach. I've been in sales for the last eight years full time uh, with, with many different ventures. And, and I've just come to realize that you're just one idea away, right? You're one insight, one tip, one, one little maybe pearl of wisdom away from an explosion of business. Who's ready for an explosion of business? That says, I only hope this year can be worse than last year. <laughs> right? I mean, who here, December 31st, was drinking a couple glasses of champagne in expectation of things getting better? Hopefully, all, all of us, right? And but many of us can be great, we're drinking to forget. <laughs> right? God, I hope next year is better. And just praying, wishful thinking. Well, I, I, want, I want the goals, dreams, and aspirations you guys have for this year to, like, authentically, for you to responsibly tell your family, your spouse, your kids, Look, man, let's, let's have a team huddle, right? Let, let's huddle up, it, this is gonna be the year, right? I mean, who here is sick and tired of saying this is gonna be the year? A few of them, three of us, everyone else is. <laughs> it's a powerful group. <laughs> uh, but a couple things real quick, I, mean, I wanna share this, uh, this, is, this is key to me. Uh, my genuine appreciation to Bill Price uh, and the entire leadership uh, SWAT team here. I know John Maxwell's famous quote I love, everything rises and falls in leadership. Right, Bill Price, uh, I know many of you guys work with him day in and day out and weekly. In some cases, uh, you get to hear him speak. I, I know for a fact there are agents uh, in my backyard up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Go Steelers. Yeah. I mean, go Panthers. Right? But that, there are agents in my backyard in Pittsburgh that don't have a mentor, don't have access to someone of Bill Price's uh, uh, ability and skill set. And so, you know, the old saying, sometimes you don't know what you have until it's gone. I mean, I would be devouring everything that you can from Bill, uh, his insights, his, his information, his knowledge. Uh, I, I was talking uh, just a little bit ago to Rich uh, before the session started, and he had he, he encapsulated the perfect from, for me about, about Bill Price. I mean, you will not find a more relentless worker or a more loyal agent. Uh, in your entire career. This guy will take a bullet for you and your family. You're why. He's so, look, he's already been there and done it. He's already made uh, a ridiculous amount of money. He doesn't need to do the things that he's doing at the pace he's doing it, but why is he doing it? Out of gratitude. He wants everybody in this room to be at his level. So can we give him a round of applause for all Today in my organization, it wasn't for everyone in this room, so I'm eternally grateful for all your hard work. Yeah. Uh, like you said, uh, I played soccer. Who here likes soccer? Woo! <laughs> I gave her $100 before I started the sale. So uh, that's all I've ever done. So I, I know he said, like, I'm a motivation. I'm not here to motivate you, I'm here to activate you. Yeah. You understand? Because yeah. by Monday, if I just motivate you and get you pumped up, by Monday, you got a flat tire. <laughs> I'm not here to do that. I'm not in the flat tire business. I'm in the activating business. A lot of people get motivated. A lot of people get pumped up and excited. You know, Tony Robbins, whoever. Don't, if I could just get 38 more minutes of your undivided attention and just, just absorb some of this stuff. Because I went from uh, struggling at Davidson, I don't know, to this day, I think there was a typo in my application. I don't know how I got it. Uh, I mean, that's my sales career started then, right? I sold, I sold admissions, okay? But went to Davidson, left early. Did not graduate. I left early to go play professional soccer. It was always my kid dream. And when that was done, it wasn't quite good enough to maintain that level. I got to travel the world. It was awesome. Never got a lot of playing time, but it was great. Uh, and I started my own soccer company. Right? I love kids. I love soccer. I love the concept of being a business owner. We agree people come to this country from other places not to build someone else's empire. <coughs> right? And this is supposed to be the land of opportunity, opportunity not the land of the nine to five. Right? So people start something, so I'm thinking, man, uh, let, me, let me find a way to get some money together and start a little soccer business. We're, we're, we're doing great. Let me cut to the chase. 2008, 2009, uh, obviously we all know what happened to the economy. You guys more than any other industry. But that combined with some serious medical issues with my wife, 
uh, some other challenges that we were having in our family. Uh, I'll just be very broad with you. I got exposed to the fact that linear income, no matter how much it was, was never going to allow for lifestyle. The second thing I got exposed about is without leverage, I'm going to forever be incarcerated. You understand this? Mm -hmm. So I was seeking, like you are right now, while you're here, for many reasons I know, but, but <laughs> seeking something where I could still be my own, be my own boss, have something I could feel good about that was integrous, that had loyalty, that had a track to run on, but that would allow me, God forbid, I mean, what, let me ask you a question. Let me throw this up. What do you do if you get laryngitis? Other than freak out. <laughs> right? I mean, what, what do you do if you, if you have a family member that gets sick or have a need that you need to attend to? You get exposed, don't you? Because you're only as good as your last yeah. sale. So, so what if there was a way, thinking out loud here, that I can make money, you can make money on a residual, ongoing basis in perpetuity with or without your presence? Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. So let's, let's, let's dive in here. I'm going to go through some, some stuff that I want you to think about, take notes, uh, and we can uh, collaborate after this. If I can give anyone any other information, I'd be happy to do that. First thing here, if you look at the screen, uh, I'm going to cover these in rapid fire fashion. Four big staples that I want you to leave with today. First one is you've got to have a big why. Now, when I start talking about this, I know I run the risk of you sort of falling on deaf ears because you've heard this speech before. Like, the bigger the why, the harder you try, right? Your attitude determines your altitude. We've, we've heard this, okay? But, but I got it. You have to understand something is just on the other side of discomfort, that's where success lives. Yeah. So, so how do I get myself out of my own way? How do I how do we become comfortable being uncomfortable? How do I do that? I got to focus on my why. See, if I if I feed my why and I starve my fear, then I thrive. So, so what is your why? We're going to talk about that. Second thing is you got to be coachable. Right? I mean, this is what captain, see, I met Bill years ago uh, by someone else's introduction. We bumped into each other. We know there's no accidents, right? This was meant to be. I was not supposed to be flying back into Charlotte. Got a flight early. Uh, my Uber driver drove extra fast to get me to an East Street hunt, and I bumped into Bill Price. I mean, we're standing right next to him. Like, Dude, you're Bill Price. He goes, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the love, right? Anyways, but that was that we reconnected. And, and what I realized is that this guy's been there, done it, had success. You look at some of the other people in the room. Uh, I mean, didn't Rich Thomas Heen just crush it on his course yeah. today? Yeah. I mean, so to me, that's one of the biggest assets of EXP is that there's someone in place that's already been through the ringer that's willing to show you how to do it. Two types of learning, personal experience or other people's experience. Who, who here would agree that the latter sounds much better? <laughs> right? Okay, so you have that. Guard your mind. Who here knows this? Right? Look at the, avoid toxic people and dream stealers. This is all about the real estate between your ears. Okay, getting your mind right. And then lastly, we're going to talk about personal growth to have more you got to become more. Okay, so let's, let's jump in here. The first thing I want to talk about is, is kind of get you thinking a little bit. I won't belabor this point, but I do want this to be sort of a homework assignment, if you will. Uh, to get with your significant other, get with your kids. Uh, we have an almost three and almost five year old. I'm going to be, I, I love talking to my, my kids about this because can we agree to kids anything's possible? Yeah. Who has ever asked a 12 year old what kind of car they want? <laughs> I promise you it's not yours. <laughs> right? I mean, my, my five, almost five year old does not say, Dad, one day I want that minivan. <laughs> Doors with the both sides, it's like a space shuttle. No. What's he say? I want a Ferrari. Right? I want a monster truck to carry my Ferrari, right? Because he's still dreaming, right? So we're gonna talk about that. I want you to be thinking about what is your why? Here's some ideas to get to the wheels turning, more time with family, uh, retirement. I know that's a big, uh, a big point of conversation here. Economic insulation. Uh, no one can really predict the future. We know that's impossible, but when you look at some of the biggest financial analysts in the world, I've met guys that are hedge fund guys with Goldman Sachs and some big, big heavy players in the marketplace who all kind of have insider information. And they said, right, wrong, or different, here's the reality. Another downfall is coming. Now, we can sit here and, and, and be immune to that and pretend that we're immune to that, but here's the question. Like, what if they're right? Now, if they're wrong, are you mad? No. But why not be prepared? Uh, college tuition, vacation, help parents. I love Chuck, uh, uh, Rich's story about, I mean, retiring his, his parents. I mean, that's unbelievable. And then church involvement. So just be thinking about that. Another way to look at your why, here's a, one more story to get you to really, really stretch you outside of, boy, if I could just pay my car payment. Oh, we got to think bigger than that, right? Okay? It's just, just get this visual in your head for a second. 
All right, let's say that we that I that I I, I gave everyone a competition here. Right, here's the challenge. Okay, I'm gonna put a, a, a 50 foot piece of wood plank on the on the earth, on the ground. Okay, just pretend that I'm on the floor here. Full slab payment, it's not going anywhere, we think, right? Pretty safe. 100 foot plank, uh, six inches wide, and all I say to you is I'm gonna give you $100 to walk on that wood plank. But here we do. Everyone, right? Come on, everyone. You understand, right? I mean, that's the easiest $100 you've ever made. Okay, I mean, 100 foot plank on the, on the floor, like what's the catch? There's no catch. It's are you gonna make 100 bucks or not? Well, let's change the story. Let's put that 100 foot plank 50 stories high between two buildings. <laughs> now, downtown Charlotte on a cold, rainy day, the wind's whipping, it's chilly outside, you can kind of hear sirens and car horns in the distance, right? And I say, same $100, same wood plank. Uh, I need you to walk from one side to the other side. Who here's going? No. Now, now why won't you go? Because the, the, the motivation, the why is not big enough. You with me? Let's change the story one more time. You're on this side of the building, same 100 foot plank, uh, same 50 stories, same wind whipping, same cold rainy day, smog, you can't really see, you can't kind of hear, but you kind of can. It's almost a little bit eerie. Now, here you are on the other side, the other <coughs> building, 50 stories high, are your three kids. And you're, you're looking at your kids over there, and, and the <laughs> building you notice is now on fire. There's smoke coming out of the building, and you know it's, it's, it's literally one of those situations where you have to decide now, right? You can't wait. Now, who here is running across that wood plank? Some of you guys are wondering, uh, which kids? <laughs> right? So here, jot this down, jot this down. Hey, when the why is powerful, the how to doesn't flip and matter. You with me? All right, let's move on. Uh, so we're going to talk now kind of a hybrid back and forth, a little bit about mindset, uh, because everything's mindset. That's one for your notes, by the way. Everything, everything is mindset. Everything is mindset. No one doesn't win an EXP because the comp plan doesn't work. People don't win here because of their mindset, all right? But we also have to balance that with skills. We need skills. I mean, I, listen, I suck at fishing, okay? So I took my boys, this is like a proud dad moment, the other day, Lindsay and I took our boys down to South Carolina, Lake Murray, that with one of my business partners, he's a, he owns a huge landscaping company. He happens to be a pro bass fisherman. I look like a hero because <clears throat> he knew how to do everything. He had the skills to be a good fisherman. You understand this? Now, thank God my boys were looking at me saying, Dad, how do we fish? I said, ask her, right? <laughs> so here's the point is we need skills. We have to have the mindset and the skill set. What I'm going to talk about now is, is how to launch your EXP business, how to make uh, to go from, from excitement and dreaming and having a big why to, right, what do we actually do? Like, let, let's get out of the huddle and onto the field, okay? Is we want to schedule your lunch and learn today. Uh, please hear this. This may not sound profound to you, but, but it is. Don't leave this ballroom today. Don't leave the Peninsula Clubhouse today until you've booked your EXP lunch and learn. That, that is so, see, what gets scheduled gets done. See, there's seven days in the week, some days not one of them, right? I mean, let me ask you a question. The why that we just discovered that, that we're talking about, your family, medical bills, retirement, concern, lack, stress. I mean, I don't know about you, but years ago, people would say to me, Eric, where do you see yourself in five years? I'm like, dude, five years? I'm just praying for Saturday, <coughs> right? Anyone with me in this? Okay, so the why that we just established, does your why want you to wait until mid-February to do your lunch and learn? When does your why want you to do your next lunch and learn? Yeah. yeah, this week, this week. Is there ever a perfect time to do anything great? No. So let's schedule that. Now, uh, get with your, your leader, get with your coach, your mentor, whoever you're working with, and get on their calendar, okay? Second thing I want you to look at here is how do we actually schedule that? There's a skill in scheduling, believe it or not. Set a date and time. Now, don't pull your contacts, big mistake. Who here's married? Come on, be proud. <laughs> so like, well, no, 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 no. Now, when you booked your when 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 your wife or your fiance booked the wedding date, did you pull your contacts? No. You didn't call me and say, "Listen, we're thinking about doing this very thing." You know, uh, how does July fifth work for you? <laughs> no, you, you booked it based on who's scheduled. Yours. So book your schedule based on yours. We never cancel lunch and lunch. Whether there's two people coming or 52 people coming, you never know. Remember, write this down. You're one person away from an explosion. 
You're one, the next person you talk to could be the next <coughs> Sherry Stroll. The next person you talk to could be the next Melissa Brown. You never know who is coming. Second thing, we're going to talk about this quite a bit today, is making a list. Uh, 100 names, right? When I pulled a lot of the success stories in EXP just in the last handful months, made a ton of phone calls to find out what are the top, what are the greats, what are the, what are the titans of EXP doing right? There's got to be some commonalities. Here's what they did. Every single one of them made a list of at least 100 people. Don't prejudge. Go after everybody. Who do you want to go after? Everybody. Who? Everybody. everybody. Right? You want to go after everybody. Focus on, uh, obviously, agents that are producing, people that you know that uh, have been in real estate. But, but I like going after a certain attitude. Right? Hungry people, happy people, accomplished people. And then bullet point number three is we want to invite. Now this one, this is another thing that I've discovered in the last handful of months of talking to people all around the country about your lunch and learns. Is 50% of everyone that says, I will be there, are not going to show up. Has anyone else seen this? Yes. Okay, so if you want to have, let's do the math. If you want to have 15 people there in person, how many yeses do you have to get? You've got to get 30. Okay, so over and right. Now, the beauty of this, okay, if you have a lunch and learn of 17 people, and let's say three or four in due time eventually come on board to EXP to join your team, okay, in the back of their mind, they're going to go back and say, okay, how was I in mind? What example did I see? See, people do as we do, not as we say. If you want to have an explosive 2019, be the best example. Have a couple big lunch and lunch, you'll get a few agents organically involved, and all they're going to do is mirror what you did. You with me on this? Okay. Now let's talk a little more about the list. Your pipeline is your lifeline, okay? Uh, when I think about the, the value of this, I mean, obviously you guys know there's no inventory, we have, we have no stuff to store, but we do have a list of names, okay? Some things I want you to think about as I talked to some of you even this morning, about this process because this really is an exercise to, to take seriously. I mean, don't do this while you're pumping gas at 7-Eleven. Don't do this while you're watching a ball game. I mean, be disciplined. Give this the time and energy that it deserves. I can promise you right now, there are people praying tonight uh, for your phone call. Now, they may not be praying about your name or EXP specifically, but they're praying for something, okay? So a couple things. Number one, perspective. See, I don't know about you, but when I take it away from me, it's not about me. It's not about you. I mean, I know some of you guys in here have been doing real estate for a couple decades. You made a bunch of money. But you were the right track to run on the way from already being retired. Now, who here by show of hands is thankful someone called you about EXP? Does anyone say, I can't believe you gave me a better compensation plan. I can't believe you, you gave me the Amazon of real estate. I can't believe you gave me the fastest growing company in the world. I can't believe you. No. We're all thankful that someone called us. Okay, so take the time to, to make the list. Uh, suspend and worry about the result. Don't go into this, oh my God, I don't know if they're going to get involved, they may not like it, it may not be for them. Let them decide. Remember, you and I invite, someone else explains, they decide. Okay? Uh, have a get there mentality and then know the numbers. This will, this will hopefully uh, hit your heart pretty profoundly here. If you look at this next screen, um, Rich talked a little bit about this, but you, you got to know some of the marketplace numbers. I'm, I'm always thinking economy. I'm always thinking marketplace, real world, because you and I, listen, we're not average thinkers. We're not here on a Saturday because we're bored. Okay, but you have to know some of the stats. If you look at this here, on capsulate with one phrase, only 5% of people upon retirement age retire financially fit. So the most powerful country in the world has only found a way to provide sustainable income upon retirement for 5% of the population. And I think that's generous. Right? So, how can you and I, let's just be real here. So, Kevin, real deep. Yeah. How, can, how can you and I know about something that could potentially change someone else's life, or at least enhance it? How audacious do we have to be tonight with a no one? With me? Yeah. Profound, man. It's incredible, these numbers. 54% broken dependent, 36% dead, 5% still working, 4 and plus 1, 5% financially independent, or maybe even wealthy. Okay? All right, so I'm going to roll through this here now. So think about what we've done so far, okay? We, we've written down our why. We've sort of had a, a little family discussion. Make your loved ones know what your why is. I mean, write it down, right? Uh, there's two wolves. Which one lives? The one that you feed, right? So send yourself a text message on your screensaver, on your, uh, when, you, when you hit the lock button. What image appears? Is it your why? Is it, is it a picture of your why? 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, everywhere you go, uh, have something that reminds you of your walk. That which you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. What gets me out of my comfort zone is thinking about, all right, am I going to give away the power? Of, do I care more about what that dude thinks than being able to provide for my family? Surely not. Okay, so we got our why down. We made our list. We scheduled our lunch and learn. Okay, now here's the big question. I know a lot of you guys are dying to, to really master it. And, uh, I mean, hopefully, I know Rich cleared a lot of the air for a lot of us. I mean, it was mind-boggling, that, that training. Is how do we get there from our list to the lunch and learn? Is anyone else wondering that? Yeah. Who here wants to become a professional inviter? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I mean, th think about Hollywood, right? I mean, this is the Hollywood the best of this. A 90-second movie preview trailer, right, about action, romance, drama, explosions. We're on the way to the theater. Your significant other says, what's this movie about? You say, I don't know, it looked good. <laughs> right? Now, what got you to the movie? The trailer. The trailer. Okay, so, I mean, truthfully, I mean, yeah, the directors want you to like the movie, the actors and the actresses want you to talk about the movie, but ultimately, where they actually spend more of their money is in the preview. So again, go back and don't be concerned whether they get involved in the XP. Folks, here it is. Write this down. This is so good, we don't need to sell it. Right? We just have to showcase it. <coughs> now, uh, I put a little disclaimer here. I probably should have put this on the screen before this, but just, just know this. Um, your coach, whoever you're working with, they're going to help you devise you know, the, the lyrics that you can own and, and that, that you can feel good about. Right? You know the old saying, right? We seek pleasure, run from pain. Right? I mean, if, if inviting is painful, are we going to do it? No, of course not. So I, I want you to know that this is just a sample. You don't have to say this. I, I don't really care what you say. I mean, I, I do. But get with your coach and figure out the words that work for you. This is just a sample script. Um, but I want you to stay disciplined. If you can try this on for size, even for just a week or so, of, of maintaining that very that focus on selling the appointment, not the business. I think you have a lot more fun inviting. I mean, who here wants to get to a point? Think about this where you have a more difficult time not talking about EXP than you do talking about EXP. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. We're like, you bump into an agent, like, waiting to get, uh, <coughs> waiting for your table at a restaurant, and they say, and you say, you know, the pleasantries, how you doing? Wow, you know, happy new year. What do you do? And they say, I'm, I'm a real estate. Right? Who here wants to go from panic to I got this? I got this. I got this. Yeah, right? Okay, so I think if we, if we understand this, uh, we'll have some fun with it, by Okay? First thing I want you to do is, if it's not up there, is be excited. Like sometimes people say, work, you know, I'm not really like that kind of guy, that kind of girl. Like I don't really, I'm not really excited. Okay, can I give you some advice? <coughs> Change. <laughs> <laughs> like slug a Red Bull, dude. Like chase the dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like for the love of the Lord, be excited. About what? About possibility. You know what I mean? About that most people are going to... Next year, this, this time next year, be great about the same stuff, okay? So be excited, be upbeat. All right, so here it is. Hey, Joe, it's Eric, how are you? How's the family, you know, normal stuff. And I, I, listen, I'm very intentional. You know, John Maxwell says his number one law, all the laws that he's devised, 21 year people laws of leadership, his number one law is the law of intentionality. So jot this on your notes. When I make phone calls, be intentional. No one loves a schmoozer, yes or no? You don't need to talk for 28 minutes and then ambush them. No, be intentional, right? Play, you know, flex your muscles. Hey, Joe, it's Eric. How are you? How's the family? Great. Hey, listen, Joe, I know you got a lot going on. I do too. This is a business call. You have two, three minutes. So I establish availability. I don't want them sitting in the dentist chair while I'm trying to invite them to what could be the life altering business that they need, right? <coughs> now, if they say, listen, I'm walking into a meeting or I'm in a board, what, no problem. When you have two, three minutes, it is urgent that you call me back. Now, what most likely are they going to say? No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, I got it. I'm good. Right? right? Kids figure it out. Right? right? <laughs> do you have two, three minutes? Great. Listen, I know you're a lot like me. So here's one. Be, be the number one best relator realtor. Relate to people. Be a chameleon. Great. I know you're a lot like me. We both want more time, more financial security, and solidified retirement. Listen, I realize, Joe, that doing what I'm doing will never afford me those things. Now, do you think that will get anyone's attention? Now, look, so I'm calling you, calling you, Joe, to make you aware that I'm now part of the fastest growing real estate company in the country. With that said, with that said, I need you to meet someone. Now, his name's Hugh Bell. He's a big land developer, massive real estate agent. This guy has made incredible income over his career. 
He's now, right now, spearheading the development of the local Myrtle Beach marketplace, and he told me he would give me 45 minutes of his time. Now, I really don't care if you get bold or not, I need you to meet Hugh so he can show you what he showed me. Any feedback? Make sense? Now, what, what did I make that? I took it away from logic. Listen, baby, if, if, if recruiting people was a logical thing, who here would agree that everyone would be in ESP? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, logically, you almost have to try hard not to like this. Like, how can you not get involved in this just on the comp plan alone, just on, on, on you know, the, the track record and the leadership? And the, I mean, the numbers don't lie, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're crushing it. So, so why does everyone get involved? Because I think we missed the point. The, the, the number one thing that sabotages people from trying something different is the lack of self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Listen, our country, we're awash in information. This, we don't need any more information. What we need is to say to Joe, hey Joe, I know you've had success, or in seeing like this, I know you've done well over your career, but I've got a guy that I want to connect you to. See, you and I are professional people connectors. Now, if Joe says to me, sometimes he will, or, or Mary may say, hey, listen, I've seen there, I've been there, done it, I've heard all about EXP. Not the way I did. Because Joe or Susie, based on what I know about you, if you'd seen this the way I did, you'd be in. It sounds like the message fell in deaf ears because the messenger didn't give you the right information. So if nothing else, hey, it'd mean the world to me. Now, another little suggestion, again, just for your consideration, is when the person said, all right, I'll come, I'll come by. Wednesday, 1230, Hickory Tavern, I'll come by. Um, fantastic. And listen, just to make you aware, if someone from this executive's office is going to give you a call just to confirm the details. Now, what did I just do? I elevated living day late, day, day late to other professionals. I just took this thing to a whole other level. Make sense? I mean, who here gets a confirmation call from your doctor's office? Yeah. Right? Many times, multiple confer uh, confirmation calls. <clears throat> How to answer questions, be new and authentic, talk about a person, not the thing, relate to them, three-way call. This is one of the most underutilized weapons just in the last handful of months that I've seen and witnessed of people struggling to make phone calls. They don't lean on the leadership. Now, be honest here, it's okay. Uh, who here does not know how to do a three-way call? Okay, uh, some of you guys are lying. <laughs> If some of you just elbow, what's a three-way call? <laughs> call customer service on your phone, say, listen, I just was at this real estate event in Charlotte, North Carolina. They told me, customer service person from Verizon, that if I learn how to do a three-way phone call, I can become a real estate mogul. <laughs> now, what's that person gonna say? Uh, how do I find out what you're doing? Yeah. Right? Okay? But seriously, use a three-way call. You have someone that, that's been trained to, to help people not get in, but get to the, get to the presentation, okay? Recruit like the pros, sell the appointment. We talked about this, not the business. Curiosity is key. Don't ruin the movie. Make it about the who, not the want. And remember, recruiting is a process, not an event. Do you realize your single greatest recruiting tool is commitment? Just being here. Now, what is commitment? It's doing the thing that you said you were going to do long after the movie you said it and has left you. See, a lot of times when you call people about another real estate firm, such as EXP, and you're excited and you're upbeat, a lot of times the person on the other end of the phone is saying, uh, I wonder how you're going to sound in six months, right? So just stay the course. Sometimes your greatest weapons in your EXP team will show up a year after you've proven that you're going to follow through, right? Perspective, be scared not to call every industry recruits. Who here knows that the military recruits, pro sports recruit, business schools, med schools, who here recruited your spouse? <laughs> now, can we agree that wasn't always an event? Sometimes you had to really work for that. You know what I'm saying? So understand that perspective is key. Uh, this is a little last exercise. I'll just touch on this for two seconds. Sometimes it's healthy to go back and say, okay, what am I really looking for? Like, have you guys ever been uh, like on your way to the car dealership and you're gonna buy, just to say, a, a, red, a red BMW, okay? Certain types, certain kind of wheels, right? Everything's custom. And on the way to the dealership, you saw no red BMWs. You buy the car, you buy the red BMW, and you leave the lot. What do you suddenly see? Right. Now, did it just magically appear? No, your awareness changed. Okay, so list out. What are you looking for in the optimal real estate agent? What, what are those characteristics? I mean, shout out some. What, what, are, what are some things you guys look for? Open-minded. Open-minded. What else? Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Responsive. Responsive. Genuine. Trustworthy. What's that? Genuine. Genuine. Honesty. Honesty. There you go. See, we'll right now. What's that? EXP agent. There you go. Right? But, but here's, the, here's the task, though. Don't miss this. Is 
This is the law of attraction business. Right? You have to be the best example of those things. Right? I mean, everywhere you go, there you are. You realize this? <laughs> you know people are reading your billboard? The question is, what you, what's, your, what's your billboard saying? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not saying you gotta go out and, and look in the park every, you know, to the grocery store, but dress for success, right? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, one of my mentors said one time, he goes, years ago, when I was still kind of in a transition from soccer to like get, having a real business, he says, uh, just remember, you know, how you look is, is important. You don't need to buy expensive stuff, but you at least, you know, clean up. Like, iron your shirt, for, for God's sake, you know? He says, because remember, you can't sell the dream if you look like a nightmare. <laughs> so, look classy where you go. You never know. You could, like I said, dropping the kids off for school, you could be at, at the ball field, you could be at the gym, and bump into an agent, and you want to be prepared to invite them to the lunch room. All right. Um, in combination here, guys, with your with scheduling your lunch and learn, again, it's suggestion time, uh, schedule a coaching call. Right? So if, if, I'm, if I'm doing a lunch and learn uh, for Mary, let's say it's on Thursday, at the same time I schedule that lunch and learn, okay, I'm going to schedule time to do a coaching call. Now, three, four, five, six days before that lunch and learn, we're going to get on the phone and role play the script. One of the biggest things I want you to take to heart here, and please take this with love, is please don't practice the script on your prospects. Right? Practice is when the fans are not in the stands yet. You understand? So practice with your coach. Role play back and forth. Let him or her cut and paste a script together that you can own uh, where we can make sure to get your people to the meeting the right way. Okay. Uh, I actually want you to learn basic stuff. You guys already know this. I know. But, you know, it, it, don't apologize for no-shows. Right? We know what percentage are not showing up. 50%. 50%, right? So if you've got 10 agents there, and you're like, guys, listen, I'm excited that you're here. I'm all in. Uh, now, half of my group didn't make it. You know, my, my main powerhouses didn't show up, but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Bill, I'll turn to you. No, no, remember, who's ever there, that's all that matters. Fair enough? Don't interrupt the speaker, and then you guys know this, but this is a huge takeaway for today, is you gotta become a professional sorter. You gotta sort through people fast. Why is Bill Price and some of the other people in here crushing it, and Rich, and other people, I know uh, Shelly, and this guy, we're getting a bunch of people, but, but why, why are they doing so well? They're great sorters, right? They're great sorters, so we want to sort fast. Let's talk about that. All right. Um, I said this in my opening remarks, and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you what. This, if you leave here today, obviously you guys got a ton of information about you know, the world and the back office and how to onboard someone, which is all fantastic. The mechanics are critical. you, you got to have the skills. But if you look and study not just success stories, but failure stories, like how can that guy, that guy and that gal come into EXP and not crush it? What, what, what were they missing? Uh, I believe it's mindset. If you look at this next screen here, we are, we're sorters. We gotta go through people fast. Uh, it says here, sorting is fun, convincing is grand. Be a pro, listen, sort, and, and move on. And remember, no is not no forever. At the bottom of, your, at the bottom of the screen here, SW, 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 next. Some will, some won't, so what, someone's waiting. <laughs> Be a very good nexter, right? Come back to that. No one loves the desperate dude, yes? No one loves you to, to headlock them. And remember, it's that good, we don't need to sell it, all right? Three types of people, red apples. Who here loves red apples, <laughs> right? If you show them and halfway through the presentation, they're like, dude, I'm in. Sign me up. Put me in. I, I want to do one of these. I want to do one of these lunch and learns next week at a restaurant near my house, right? Who here loves those people? We all love those. Now, can we agree that it's not? That's not very common. That's not very normal, right? Maybe it's a loyalty to a, their old company. Maybe it's just wanting more information. No problem. Okay. But get excited about red. Apples. Expect red apples. Don't let your expector expire just because you've gone through 84 people and all of a sudden you think about it. The next person could be the person that says, "Boom, I'm in." The middle category, the oranges. Uh, this is the I want to think about. I need some more information. Can we follow up? Can we go through the map? Can we look at the numbers? Can I compare and contrast? I mean, Patrick Mooney, here's a guy at Columbia, South Carolina, he's got a team. He's crushing it. I mean, this was such a logical thing. He looked at it, absorbed it, got some more information, asked some questions, I'm in. Off to a smoking start. Okay, and then we have the last category. Coconuts. <laughs> Who here's got some coconuts? Like, they want to argue with you, don't you? Right, they want to tell you why it won't work, and they want to go down this road and, 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 and try to shoot holes in something that, that, that can't be broken. This, this has an armor of steel. Okay? 
Unfortunately, though, when, when you look at, and maybe this is you, I know it's for me in, in all kinds of different businesses, is we obsess about this group. Like we try to con convert a coconut into an apple. Well, like, and we talk, anyone ever talk to coconuts? Like, maybe if I put it up on the windowsill and give it some motivational talk, it'll change, right? And maybe more sunlight's needed, maybe a little water. And we wake up the next day and it's still a uh, coconut. coconut. So when, you were, when your mentor calls you up and says, hey, how'd that lunch room go? I say, a bunch of coconuts. Right? You know exactly what's, what's happening. These are people that just need more information. They need you to move on from them to show you that you're going to follow through. Now, I'm going to show you a little video clip here that I think will give you a visual of what it's like to talk to someone and the importance of not arguing with people. Right? And how you and I, if we can leave here today and over the next seven days, sort for people fast. There are people hungry. Who here, yes or no, that from what I've heard, uh, this is the most opportune time to find agents for your team. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay, so let's watch this clip and I'll come back up. Let's see what I got. something I know we've probably heard, and, and again, a lot of you guys are, are really good leaders. I've heard a lot of people that are um, made New Year's resolutions. That includes personal growth and personal development. I mean, we know the importance of this, right? Has anyone ever read good books or uh, turned your car into a mobile library? We, we, know, that, we know how important uh, putting good stuff in is, especially because we know we're in the people business. You guys know this. I mean, sometimes some of the best real estate agents that I've met from all over the country I mean, they know real estate, of course, and they, they know the mechanics and the, and the metrics and the skill sets, but they're amazing with people. I mean, you ever wonder, like, how did that person get so good with people? Like, they're so good, they could be talking to a first-time home buyer that has no credit, and they find a way to be patient, they, they relate to that person. They could be talking to someone in their 70s, and they, they get on their level, they realize what they're looking for, they're just great creators, okay? Part of that, that emotional intelligence, I think, uh, that, that all of us here can work on and, and take to another level is, is just that, our, our mental muscle, right? And so, I mean, look, we've all been on this. Anyone been on the emotional roller coaster? Has anyone been on this today? <laughs> I mean, I, I've talked to some of you guys, you're on the way to a closing that collapses before you get there, right? Or, or you're going to show home and the person doesn't show up. We, we've, we've seen this stuff before. So as you, just understand, this is part of your story. See, the greatest coaches in the world for real estate, worldwide, are the best relators. Why? Because they, they collected a bunch of stories. I mean, wouldn't it be great for you to, every, in every situation, for one of your team members to be able to say to them, listen, I know exactly how you feel. Felt the same way, but here's what I found, Joe. Right? But you can't say feel felt found with authenticity until you've collected a bunch of stories. 
So, I mean, I'm not telling you to, to seek out train wrecks, but know that there's a purpose for the train wreck. You understand? I mean, I remember, look, when I, when I started getting, looking at real estate years ago and became very fascinated with the industry, I mean, I, I learned that there, there's more people that have, that have earned the wealthy status. There's more millionaires in the real estate industry than any other industry in the world. Do you guys know this? Yeah. I'm like, this is awesome. I mean, yeah, soccer's fun, but I, I like that better, right? It's incredible. Uh, I was pumped about it. I'm thinking, man, I'm excited. Right? And then I realized, uh, after I talked to someone, that they weren't excited. They wanted to have every excuse of why this would work. In fact, one of my best friends, Justin, um, was a groomsman in my wedding. I told him that I said, Justin, I'm really looking at real estate pretty hard. Uh, the industry's incredible. You know, you make your own schedule. You, it's basically a performance-based compensation plan. You, you get paid for what you're worth. Uh, you got autonomy. You can do it anywhere on the map. Uh, it's all about good people to people. He goes, yeah, I can't understand it. Um, I know you sound excited and you're very enthusiastic about it, but most people really don't make it big in real estate. In fact, he, he, not only did he go to that length, but because he's, quote, my best friend, sent me a four-page PDF file <laughs> via email at one in the morning of why I would not win in real estate. And at the very end, he just wrote a little note. I'm, I'm only saying this, Eric, because I'm like a brother to you. You're one of my best friends, and I really care about you. Now, what did that do to my confidence? I was crushed. I mean, who here has that guy or gal in your life that you think would, is going to join your EXP team just because you asked him to? Like, I thought that was going to be one of my guys, right? And he, he just slaughtered me. I'm like, oh, my God. No, because I'm his best friend. I'm just thinking, man, there's probably going to come a time or an opportunity where I can maybe repay the favor. <laughs> so not yeah. Okay, let's talk about growth. Uh, when I left my last company, they all actually kind of made fun of me and laughed at me. They said, you're going to a company that won't be here in a year. Well, let's see how that turns out so far. So 2017 in Charlotte MLS, we wound up with 192 listings. In 2018, 1,250 listings. Think we're going in the right direction? Yeah. How about the buy side? We have 213 on the buy side. In 2018, 1,500 on the buy side. Tremendous growth we're experiencing. Total sales. 2017, 160 million. You guys ready for this? 750 million dollars. That's all you guys. And we brought over so many agents in June, July, and August. That is half of the Um, Do we still hear a repeat on this rich and You're good. You're good? Okay. Let's talk about the growth in the state. 2017, we wanted up with 230 agents. We just broke 1,000 agents in North Carolina. Fast growing real estate company, bar none, in the state of North Carolina. We're going to talk about relationship building. If you guys think you're going to build your organization by, you know, robocalls and mass texts and mass emails, it's not the way to do it. Okay? Building relationships is what really counts in this business. You have to go eyeball to eyeball, belly to belly, to make this work, okay? Teddy Roosevelt once said, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. That's important. And uh, during presentation, they have to pick on some people. Where's Lauren? Rocco. Rocco, stand up for a second. <laughs> I was lucky enough to sponsor Laura Rocco, okay? Um, she is a tremendous realtor, and uh, she does real estate in grace, uh, morals, ethics, you couldn't judge this person. I mean, she's one of the favorite people uh, I know. Um, so I sponsored you. Um, did I make you feel like you were a number, or did I make you feel like I care about you? No, you made me feel like you cared. When you, and how do you introduce EXP to other agents? Through relationships. Yeah. And what do you and I go out and do? Have coffee, meet, answer questions, be available. And have lunch, breakfast, coffee, and, and that's that's what that's what counts, right? Because yeah. these people know you actually care about. Them. Steve, you and I met for coffee, didn't we? And how much time did you spend with Nick getting you up and running after that? The day? Heidi Hawkins, right? 
you and I met for a nice dinner. And yeah, then, you don't call me back. I know where you live. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Melissa, Melissa Chambers, again, another great agent in the area, just spent all the other people. really important that if, if you don't bring someone over, guys, and forget about them. You bring them over and you cultivate them. You help them. Okay? It's the only way that your organization is going to have a strong foundation. And you just have to make yourself available for anyone that you bring over. You just can't bring people over and forget about the people. Okay? Um, so just remember that going forward. This is an eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball business. Make the people feel that you care about them and your business will flourish. And you just create that as you grow your business. As you bring someone on board, you make sure that the person they bring on board feels loved and cared about. And you instill that into every person you bring on board and they will instill it to the next person they bring on board. That's really important. Okay, we're gonna talk about core values, okay? Uh, I'm gonna pick on uh, some people here. Uh, there's Shelly Johnson, Shelly Rory. Shelly, come on up and just take one of these values of ESP that's important to you. And uh, we have a problem with our mics, so you just have to talk voiceless, okay? I can do that. So this is, everyone knows her, but this is Shelly Johnson from the Johnson. <laughs> to me, collaboration is big because if you look at this room, I think we're all collaborating on a high level. And that's exciting to me to be able to help. And never in my real estate career have we ever been to link arms together and financially help each other and our families. And that's been huge. The company has built a platform with Workplace, Facebook, um, our Facebook groups we have created for you guys. All those groups are for collaboration and to help each other and we lean on each other. And when you reach up, like when Lauren reaches up to Bill or someone reaches down to somebody else and helps them reach across, that's what makes collaboration. That's what's going to make us super successful in 2019. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Keely, please come on up. I'm going to pick on you next. <laughs> Keely, I used to be team lead at Keller Williams. Um, and she's a, a great white shark. She's grown her organization to, to record, record numbers. So what am I talking about? Okay. Whichever, whichever is important. My favorite is service. Um, I love to be of service, um, both in my community and in real estate. And this company, more than any other company that I have, have been with, um, is a big proponent of that. I'm able to be of service to the agents that I bring in to the company, whether it be um, with real estate transactions or um, helping them grow their organizations. Um, so it has been a gosh, what a great fit for me from that standpoint. But I love that, that we're a service organization. And, um, and Bill spoke to it just earlier, how we help each other. So that's my, my favorite thing. And uh, I, I gotta say, Shelly and, and Healy, um, in this business, you don't always lead up and lead down. We help each other. Yeah. I always turn to Craig and Shelly for help, who sponsored me. I turn to Rich Tomasini, who I sponsored. I'll turn to Rich, uh, I mean, uh, Tom Hoffer or Healy, who I didn't sponsor, and, but we help each other. You, you, know, you lead up and lead down, you go for help, up or down, it doesn't matter. We're all out here to help each other. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Yeah.